And if you haven't heard the great news, EBR Motorcycles is back yet again. <laughs> that is awesome. This is a great time for motorcycles. Today is Thursday, December 13th, and this is a rare opportunity for me to ride one of my motorcycles. So why not? If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell so that you can be notified when I upload new content. Today, it's all about the EBR 1190RX. And if you haven't heard the great news, EBR Motorcycles is back yet again. <laughs> that is awesome. It seems like just yesterday I loaded up the BMW X5 and headed over to East Troy, Wisconsin to meet with the gang over at EBR Motorcycles when they had rebooted the company. Hey everybody, your good buddy 650 Eve here. It is about 5 a.m. and I'm starting my trek to East Troy, Wisconsin for the EBR racing debut of the 1190RX. years after that I was sad to hear that they had went out of business and now according to my good buddy Bill Melvin they are back albeit this time it's for a limited run and what Bill describes as he's going to make boutique and rather special motorcycles um, and it seems to be these bikes might be somewhat made to order uh, pricing has not been announced for the bikes just yet but a picture did surface of one of the EBR 1190RXs that they're working on and it has the exact same paint scheme that my good buddy Eric Buell used when he first started racing motorcycles. So that is pretty awesome. Somebody's been doing donuts in this empty parking lot. Hmm. I wonder if it was my good buddy Damon Fryer and his Huracan. Great idea though. I might have to try that out myself. All right, let's jump on the EBR 1190RX and go for a cruise while it's still nice out, huh? Oh, my fuel light's on. Oh, now it's off. Okay, cool. What a great bike to ride, especially on a day like today where you don't really need a lot of power. I mean, it's December for Pete's sake. Uh, we were just in a frozen tundra just last week. Temperatures were in the teens. Today it's about 40 degrees, so you never really know where there's going to be some black ice so you don't want to go around speeding all about but what you can do on a bike like this on a day like today is really enjoy the v-twin character of the motorcycle it's really awesome really gives you that rumbling feel like you really know there's a a pretty nice a substantial engine that you're riding on really cool but the bike is cool in a variety of ways and the fuel, as you mentioned, on this bike, it's in the frame. Did right? you see where the filler cap is? No. Yeah, here's the filler cap right up here. So this is the front part of the frame right here. You take the cap off here, and the fuel is actually in the side portion right here. Wow. This is not only the frame, but it's the fuel tank, too. So what is in this area? This is the air box. We can go right down the line and look if you want to see. Right. This is the air box. Okay. So this goes in the frame. It's huge. And you got an injector here, an injector here. And then when it's all in there, then you put the throttle body on top, which is this thing. Wow. So, so you got two more injectors up here. So when you're really, it's like a four barrel. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 8,000 RPM roughly. It starts to spray fuel out of these right here. Yep. 
So wow. these don't work until you're power. really getting on it. And it's wow. a very linear power grid. Just being able to hear from this visionary on sort of the design language and why he chose to do th different things with his motorcycle was pretty amazing. You know, a lot of the a lot of the companies, even at the lower level of Superbike, are putting on aftermarket Rambos and stuff like this. We ran all the way up to the World Superbike level with stock brakes. And so they really work. But where they work the best is real world riding of a fast bike, where the roads are mm -hmm. rough and bumpy. And it also adds to I mean, the whole stability, the stickiness of the front end. There's just a lot of things in the chassis well, that's, that's that, part of that just work. That's, that's part of racing, too. If you don't have good brakes, you're not going to be competitive in racing. Right. And, you know, we had to have it up to that level, but mm -hmm. we were able to get there without having, you know, and still keep a lightweight, which is, and, and you know, interestingly enough, it, even at the World Superbike level, we had the option to run the ten thousand dollar, ten thousand euro Brembo system. And Larry, when he was riding, was a second a lap faster with his system, just because he had gotten used to how deep he could go in the corner. With right. It. Because Before the front, you know, right. on Superbike, you had a lot of times with the front end chatter is a big thing that everybody complains about. That's basically because the you're doing all your suspension with the tire because the suspension itself is overwhelmed by the weight of the wheel. They have to make it stiff enough that it doesn't come off the ground. These bikes just don't have front inner chatter. It doesn't even exist in it, but that's that's really why, because the wheel's so light. I enjoyed that a lot, and I'm looking forward to talking with him again. I spoke to Eric Buell a couple of weeks ago, actually before they announced the company was coming back, and he agreed to meet with me, and he also agreed to sign the motorcycle for me, so that's pretty awesome. And because of all that, I have decided to keep my 1190RX. It is no longer for sale. In 2019, I'm gonna make time to continue riding this amazing motorcycle. Cause it's just a lot of fun. It's a great looking bike, has nice technology. I mean, this bike has a quick shifter that was plug and play. Uh, the, ECM, the ECM had been flashed to accept the quick shifter and it works great. LED turn signals, LED headlights, LED brake lights, thin film transistor, instrument cluster, it's really nice, full color. 20 levels of traction control on this bike. It's just a good bike. I thought it was cool that he was able to bring back a couple of the key guys, E-Rock and Elliot. You know, uh, E-Rock had been with the company since 1996, and he is the engine guy. And then Elliot, the chassis guy, had been with EVR since 2000. So to get those two guys back to produce these hand-built motorcycles, it's pretty awesome. You know, Bill says that there isn't a price that they have is set for the bike yet. That's going to depend on exactly how much money it takes to actually build the bike. But if I were to guess, I wouldn't think that the uh, the, uh, the 1190RX shouldn't cost any more than $14,000. You know, maybe even $12,000 if they're really aggressive and they want to move these bikes this time. This is a great time for motorcycles. Uh, we got two new bikes coming out next year. The BMW S1000 RR is all new for the first time in about 10 years. Um, the Ducati V4R is coming out as well. There's been some revisions to the CVR 1000 RR. And uh, the Katana is back. So I'm not a Suzuki hater. I actually love the Katana. It is an awesome bike. I love what they've done to it since they've resurrected it. They've totally modernized it with a TFT display, uh, LED head and tail lights, and turn signals. And, just made it really awesome and it still keeps its retro flavor it still looks very similar to the first one the original katana so that's great and i'd hope that they'll do that with the busa i hope that they can bring it back and make it modern you know install a quick shifter auto blipper tft display maybe slim it up a little bit but still you know uh keep a big bad motor on it that would be awesome I love nothing more than, than to see that. And if they did that, then I'd probably purchase one, indeed. So yeah, I'm gonna attend the Dallas Motorcycle Show with my good buddies Yammy Noob and my good buddy Outspoken Tiger. 
Uh, unfortunately, I reached out to my good buddy, Mr. Asshole by Nature One, and he's gonna be traveling for work on business, so he won't be at the Dallas show, but we should have a lot of fun. This is uh, gonna be on Saturday, I believe it's January 5th. I will be there. And uh, if you wanna come out and meet with me, I'll be there uh, on Saturday the 5th from about two o'clock till seven o'clock. And I will be letting you know the areas I'll be in once I'm there. And I'm going to uh, feature a lot of the bikes that I didn't have time to feature from the New York City Motorcycle Show. So there's going to be a lot of Suzuki content. I'm going to go over the new Katana, the Jixxer 1000 in uh, great detail. Oh, I am out of fuel now. Oh, got to get some fuel. Fuel light is definitely on now. Um, where the hell is my nearest fuel station? All right, I think I know where I'm going. So yeah, I'm gonna cover a lot of the bikes that I missed from the New York show. Suzuki uh, Triumph, the MV, that awesome new MV uh, naked bike with the wings on it. Definitely gonna cover that. That's an awesome bike. I think it's called the Brutale, but I'm not sure. But yeah. And if, if there's a bike that you want me to cover while I'm there, go ahead and drop it in the comments. And I will be sure to try to do that for you. Cause uh, that's what it's all about. It's about bringing content for you folks. You awesome people that take time out of your lives to watch our videos, I salute you. I appreciate you. I apologize if I've offended you. And, uh, and I will do better moving forward. All right, I'm gonna concentrate on getting some fuel in this bike before I run out. And uh, thank you guys so much for viewing. If you're new to my channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, go back and tap that bell so that you can be notified when I upload new content. New videos are always uploaded to the 650 EB YouTube channel. Now stay tuned for more videos. And as always, thanks for viewing. I really appreciate you. There'll be a lot more videos coming up. For 2019, we've got some amazing motorcycles joining the fleet. So stay tuned for that. We'll catch you next time.